This is my friend's 2012 MacBook Pro. It's been almost 13 years since he bought it. Initially, it performed very well, but over the time, it began to struggle with running the latest versions of macOS. Then we tried running Ubuntu, Arch Linux, Windows 11 on this Mac, and guess what? The performance was outstanding. Now I want to test how Proxmox Virtual Environment version 9.1 runs on this old MacBook Pro. Now this way I can leave this Mac connected to the power source and remote access the virtual machines very easily whenever I need. Now this video shows how to install Proxmox Virtual Environment version 9.1 on old MacBook Pro. You can follow the same steps to install Proxmox on nearly any Mac before 2016, especially those without the T2 security chip. Now this should work just fine for most older Macs. Now right now, this Mac is running OS X Mavericks, which we will erase and replace with Proxmox. Now before you begin, it's recommended to back up your most important data to an external drive and sign out of your iCloud account. The only requirements for this video is 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable disk with Proxmox. You can use your Windows or spare Mac to create a bootable USB. Now for this video, I'm using my HP gaming laptop. Then head over to the website and click on the download link to get the latest Proxmox ISO image. Now by the time of recording this video, Proxmox 9.1 and 8.4 are the only available versions. You can use either one. While the file is downloading in the background, head over to this other website, download HR and install it on your computer. Now go ahead and connect the USB stick to your computer and open HR and import the Proxmox ISO image. Select the USB drive and click flash. Now this will take some time, so just sit back and relax. Now once it's complete, I'm going to eject the USB drive and insert it into the old MacBook Pro. Also connect your Mac to the power source. Then go ahead and restart your Mac and hold on the option key until the boot menu or startup manager appears. You will see the bootable USB labeled as EFI boot with orange icon. Now use the arrow keys to select it and press enter. If you don't see the USB boot option, restart your Mac again and this time hold command plus R to enter Mac OS recovery mode. Inside the recovery menu, go to Utilities, then choose Startup Security Utility and change the setting to allow booting from external media. Then restart your Mac and hold Option to enter the Startup Manager. After selecting the USB drive, the Grub menu will appear. Now go ahead and select the first option and press enter to install Proxmox virtual environment. For demonstration purposes, I will be using wireless mouse and keyboard. Now go ahead and agree to the end user license. Then select the target disk and use the file system as XT4. Now go ahead and choose your country, time zone, and keyboard layout. Now 
then set the password for the root user and provide an email address. Now choose the network management interface. I'm going to leave it as default. Now as you can see, my Mac is connected to an Ethernet port. Now set the host name. Now for the IP address CIDR, use the network prefix as 24. Now this means the first 24 bits are reserved for the network. Next, set the static IP address. In my case, I'm using 192.168.1.16. And for both gateway and DNS, I'm using my router's IP address which is 192.168.1.1. Now click Next. This is the installer summary. Just go ahead and click Install. Now this process will take some time to install Proxmox on your Mac, so please be patient. Once it's done, your Mac will reboot automatically. Now, when you see this message, go ahead and eject the USB drive. Then press Enter to boot into the Proxmox server. Now, this is my IP address of the Proxmox server running on Mac. I can use this IP address within a local network from another computer browser and access the Proxmox web user interface. The default username is root and enter your password that you set during the installation. And voila, now we are inside the Proxmox virtual environment. Now you can see the alert, just go ahead and click on OK to skip. Now as you can see, this is the web interface of Proxmox. Now using the web interface, you can create, manage and remove virtual machines. Now from the sidebar, you can see a single node of your Mac and the local storage. Now let's go ahead and start creating a virtual machine. Select local PVE and click on ISO images. You can go ahead and download Linux or Windows 10 using this option or upload ISO image to the server. Now let me go ahead and upload Arch Linux ISO image. Now you can see the ISO has been added to the local storage. Then go ahead and click on Create Virtual Machine from the top right. Now choose the node and set the VM ID and enter the name of the virtual machine. Then select Operating System and choose ISO image from here. The guest OS type in this case is Linux and the version is set to default. Next, click System and set the machine configuration as Q35 and leave the BIOS mode to CBIOS. After that, allocate the disk space for the virtual machine. In my case, I am allocating 32GB for Arch Linux and the bus type is set to SCSI. Now under the CPU section, I set two cores out of four. For CPU type, I use host and for memory, allocate at least 2 GB or more. For network options, I leave everything as default and click on finish. Now give it some time and Proxmox will create the virtual machine. After a few seconds, the virtual machine will appear in the sidebar. Now go ahead and select the VM and click on console and start the virtual machine. Now you can see the Arch installer is loaded. 
I will quickly install Arch Linux with the XFCE desktop environment using the Arch install script. And that's it, Arch Linux is now successfully installed and running without any issues. It uses full KVM support and user experience is almost identical as bare metal. You know, in terms of performance, Proxmox runs surprisingly very well on this MacBook Pro. I haven't faced any major issues except for the battery drain. This is not a big problem. I can easily run other virtual machines like Ubuntu Server, Windows 10 on this Mac and take full advantage of powerful KVM for better performance. And that's how you install Proxmox virtual environment on old Mac in under 10 minutes. Let me know what do you think about this in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or queries, do post them. Thank you so much for watching. This is been KSK Royal. I'll see you in the next one.